Wow. Sorry, um, <laughs> I just had my mind blown. Um, I'm okay. I'm gonna do the intro now. Um, <clears throat> Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Adaris. Welcome to the review of Avengers: Infinity War. So, Avengers: Infinity War is the ninth. 19th movie in the MCU. It is completely and utterly insane how many movies they have created throughout 10 years. In 10 years we have been waiting for this because everything has been leading up to this. This is Thanos time to shine and holy Fucking shit does he shine! Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so firstly, the movie starts out with that Thanos and his four children of Thanos, that's that's what they're called, has attacked Thor's ship. We saw it in the end credit scene of Thor Ragnarok. Well, his ship has been attacked because Thanos is looking for the Infinity Stones. And if you noticed in Thor Ragnarok, Loki has the Space Stone. So of course, Thanos comes to them to get this stone. I don't know how he knows they have the stone, but he just know. I don't know if he's drawn towards them, but yeah, I have no idea how he knows, but he knows. So he finds our heroes on this ship and amongst the chaos, Bruce Banner or the Hulk gets sent back to Earth. And this is where we meet up with Tony Stark and Doctor Strange because they meet Bruce Banner and he has some bad news for them. Thanos is coming and he is unstoppable. So now they have to try to prepare for Thanos' inevitable attack, but before they can do anything, shit hits the fan and our movie kicks off. So what can I say about this movie? Well, not much actually, because I don't want to spoil anything. This is 10 years in the making, 18 movies in the making. So I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. So I'm gonna keep things short and vague. Well, first of all, there is Thanos. Thanos is one of the best things happening in this movie. And I will definitely say that he is one of the all-time best villains in the MCU. He even rivals Loki, and it is just with one movie. And the reason for that is that they humanize him. They ground Thanos. He's not just an evil villain for the sake of being evil. No, he has layers which makes him more real and the more real he becomes the more frightening he becomes so a lot of focus is given on thanos actually this is not an avengers movie this is a thanos movie with avengers in it because the main focus is thanos and his story arc and i like that approach because i didn't see it coming i thought it would be avengers fighting thanos and then at the end we have a happy ending or something like that but not here. This is Thanos movie, which means that when we get to the ending, it will be for the point of view of Thanos and not the Avengers. Another thing is how the Russo brothers handles the Avengers. We saw how they could do it in Civil War because there was a lot of superhero characters there, but this is on a whole other scale. It is every single hero ever put in the MCU in one movie. That means if someone had a hero sidekick somewhere, you see them. There are some few exceptions, but other than that, this is the biggest ensemble of hero characters ever put on screen, and they all work well, or for the most part. Because when you have this big ensemble and you only have so many minutes, someone is gonna get the short straw, and unfortunately, it's one of the big heroes who you never really see on screen and you never see them perform and especially do what you are looking forward for them to do, especially when it comes to their viewpoint on how they view things and how they tackle things. Someone get a really short straw, but I'm not gonna say who. 
And then there is the action. The action is mind blowing in some places. I had a feeling, or I had a fear that when Thanos was getting the Infinity Stones, he would not utilize them in a way you think the Infinity Stones could be utilized. You have a Power Stone who is making you able to destroy a planet that easily. You have a Space Stone that makes you able to be anywhere at any time and you have the reality stone who can warp reality and you have the time stone who can control time you have the mind stone who can control minds i think and i just fear that it wouldn't utilize them in a creative and almost overpowerful way but they did they actually did there were some times where thanos was using the stone and just went holy fucking sh are you okay? And the action in itself is one of the most inventive action scenes I have seen in the MCU. And it just pleases my heart to see that the Marvel can still be inventive in their action scenes and their action execution. Because at some point it will go stale to see these heroes punching the evil living shit out of bad guys. But not here, because they find some new ways for the heroes to tackle the opposing force. Iron Man has gotten an upgrade and it's one of the most inventive, fun upgrades ever and even spider-man and thor gets an upgrade and i just i just love the way they uses the characters in the action sequences another thing the heroes the way they interact with each other is just taken out of the first avengers movie you remember in the first avengers movie where they were discussing over who was wrong or right the thing where the shield was taking the hydra weapon and turning into weapons for themselves to fight alien forces and then the, everyone was discussing amongst each other or debating who was right or wrong where Thor just thought everyone was just puny and tiny. Nick Fury asked Tony Stark how he made his fortune and so forth. There is a great group dynamic in there because you feel that the characters are real and respond to each other in a meaningful and realistic way. Well here it is the same thing and it's done just as beautiful. Especially the interaction between Doctor Strange and Tony Stark is just it's masterful. I have to say that this movie is perfect will be a long stretch because it is not perfect. It does have some flaws and the flaws can at some times be downright irritating. I'm not going to go into some specific, but the ending is rushed a bit at some point. And some of the emotional scenes doesn't stick the landing. That could be that it didn't work with me, but would work for someone else. However, for me, I didn't feel sad when the movie was telling me to feel sad, which is a bummer because this is the end of the line. This is the second to last epic movie we will get with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I know they're going to be a phase four, but they have said that the next Avengers move will be the culmination and end for what they have set out in these three phases. I want to feel the heavy emotion, but I didn't. However, they are well executed. They are well played. It just didn't hit me. And then there are some subjects that's not given enough time. It does make sense though, because this movie is, I believe, two hours and 40 minutes or something like that. And it has crammed in absolute everything it could. This is on the brim of exploding. That's how much content there is in this movie. So I understand that I couldn't give everything the equal attention. But that said, some of the things that I wanted them to focus more on didn't get enough focus and then fall kind of flat. Which is a bummer because it was awesome. But all this is just minor gripes because when you get to the end of it, this movie is epic. And this movie is something I would never have thought could be possible. And to top it all off, this movie is told in a different way than the other Marvel movies, especially the Avengers movies. I will say this much. The movie has three story arcs. It's going on simultaneously that you're jumping from one story arc to the other. So you're not overwhelmed with one story arc and it just works perfectly. It is the perfect way to tell the story. It is the perfect way to utilize this huge cast and it is the perfect way to throw in different inventive action scenes, emotional heavy scenes, exposition scenes and just everything in between. I just love it because we haven't seen it utilized that well in the other MCU movies. Yeah, I know Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 kind of did it, but still here it works 
wonders. So I don't have much more to say because I don't want to spoil anything and I don't want to be more specific with the subject because it will ruin the experience for you. I don't want to ruin this specifically. I know that I'm often cautious to not ruin movies at all, but here I'm extra cautious because again, 10 years, 18 movies. I will, however, do a more in-depth review in my pros and cons series of the Avengers Infinity War. Don't worry about that. But everything said, I will say that Avengers Infinity War is worth watching and worth buying on Blu-ray. So yeah, if it wasn't for the gripes that I have with the movie, I would have bumped this movie a rating up. But I gotta be honest, it wasn't the perfect movie and it needs to almost be perfect to get the top ranking. But still, it's pretty damn awesome and you need to see it right the fuck now. Did I just get too intense? Anyway, Avengers Infinity War, have you seen what did you think about it and how do you think it ranked amongst the other MCU movies? Whatever you think, comment below and your thoughts and as always, until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome! Bye! How do you encounter Infinity and there's six Infinities? How does that work? Does it even work?